Hello folks and welcome to your next episode in our 1000 euro EV build series. Uh, for, lo for those of you just tuning in, a uh, very quick recap. Uh, my latest project is that I am going to attempt to do a practical electric vehicle conversion on a BMW E36 for 1000 euros or less. If you want to know more about the details, then please see the, the previous video. So in today's episode, we are going to talk about how we are going to power the vehicle. Now, when I say power it, I don't mean ba batteries. That will be for a future episode, episode. But today we are talking about electric motors. We're going to talk about the motor that we're going to use for the, pro the project. We're going to talk about how you can get a similar motor. And finally, we're going to talk about how we control it. Um, so obviously, uh, in our budget so far, we have spent uh, 600 euros getting a battery. And that is more than half of our current uh, budget gone. So we're now down to 400 euros to complete our build. Now, basically, if you've been following some of my other videos, you'll know that um, over the years, I started off with DC motors, moved to AC induction motors, have messed about with various permanent magnet motors, have been playing with Tesla motors, and I've been up and down the, uh, up and down the spectrum of electric motors used for EVs. Now, uh, where we have got to go, in my view, with this whole EV uh, experiment, be it from the conversion side of things or be it from the OE, OEM side, is that the cars have got to be more accessible, folks. It's, um, it's no good in having uh, such a very small spectrum of vehicles available because then it's only the people that have money up at the very top end of the car buying ladder, if you will, that can afford to purchase vehicles. Similarly with conversions um, there are a lot of companies and and organizations out there now specializing in components for high-end conversions like uh, Tesla parts and so and so on now that's fine and it fulfills a very important uh, part of the market because it, it gets cars there it shows you know what you can do but if we're going to be a success, then we need to be much more mainstream, and that's kind of part of why I've uh, I've embarked upon this particular challenge. I may or may not win, but we're certainly going to try. So, all right. So that then heavily influences motor choice for for me because not only do I have to have a motor for for this build. But it's got to be reasonably practical for you guys, uh, no matter what jurisdiction that you may find yourselves in, to uh, follow along, to be able to find at least the main components of the build so that you can uh, see that it's not just me playing fancy camera tricks here or playing fast and loose with a budget, um, but that it is indeed practical. Now, for the last four years, uh, I've been driving as my main car, a BMW E39. Uh, that was my second conversion. And that car used a big honking uh, 1975 13-inch DC forklift motor. And that motor uh, is running away today, four years and 75,000 miles later. 
uh, the very same as it did when I put it in the car. DC motors uh, were a long time the staple of conversions uh, when I started off in this again. You know, it was the warp motors, it was the advanced DC stuff um, that was really the, pin the pinnacle or kind of the Tesla components of their day. AC was pretty much on obtainium. Um, and so coming down from that then, uh, what people did was they repurposed forklift motors, which were basically a very similar uh, design to the uh, warp and the advanced DC motors that were commercially marketed for EV conversions. So when I entered this, um, the biggest barrier to me was you know, a motor from the United States was three, four grand to just get it landed here. It was just ridiculous. Um, so I came up upon on the DIY electric car forum, a very interesting tread on how to repurpose uh, forklift motors for, um, for on, on road electric vehicle conversion projects. And uh, I will put a link in the description to that tread. Now, I came into this, you know, very skeptical. You know, I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably, you know, thinking now forklift motors, but you know, that only goes five miles per hour and, you know, they're slow, they're not going to work well. But I built two cars with DC motors now uh, to date. And as I say, the results have been simply fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of um, hearsay and nonsense out there uh, about them, like there is about a lot of EV compo components. Uh, one of them is that you will be changing brushes every you know, ridiculously short distance, 1,000 miles, 500 miles even if you talk to some people. The brushes in the motor in the E39 have never been changed in 75,000 miles. Um, so there's a lot of that stuff goes around, uh, but in this case, uh, to get us in on budget and give us a practical vehicle, we're going to use a DC series wound um, X forklift motor. Now, that has a few advantages because no matter what jurisdiction that you are in, there's going to be forklifts. There's going to be could be companies that sell them, repair them, um, maintain them in various ways, break them for parts, etc. Et so I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story, uh, particular, particularly about this mo mo motor here, but under the bench I have three more, and uh, these motors basically cost me nothing. Um, when I first started off in this, I Okay, so, so I got to find a motor. Uh, so what I did was I got on the internet and I got out the phone book. And I basically contacted every company in Ireland that had the word forklift in its, uh, in its business na name. I think I must have contacted something like 50 to 60 companies. And um, after about, about a week, some replies started to trickle in. Uh, I jumped on the first one that I got and I bought an 11 inch motor uh, for my E36 uh, compact project at the time. And I paid 500 euros for that, mo for that motor and I was, you know, I was just thrilled to bits. This was fantastic um, and you'll see it in the first video that I ever made. which was very cringe worthy at this stage and that's saying something for me. Um, so what happened then was over the next few we weeks more companies contacted me and more than one of them said you know we got a pile of motors here we basically weighed them in for scrap come and take your pick and at one stage i had something like eight to ten mo uh, mo motors that i basically got for you know Free and in, I think one okay, occasion, something like 50 or 60 euros for two or three of them. They were just basically 
their weight in scrap, copper, metals, that kind of thing. So in terms of the most accessible way to convert electricity into rotating motion, uh, one of these motors is, uh, what, is, is where I would certainly recommend that you start off. Now again, there's certain modifications that we need to make to the motor for uh, use in an electric vehicle. Uh, the most important of those is a process called brush adv advancing. And I made four videos on this about seven or eight year, 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 years ago. And I'll dig out links to those and put them in the description for you to see what goes on. But this motor here uh, is typically of the few that I have left. I've, ke I've uh, kept them because I've figured at some point I'm going to need them for some kind of a, pro a pro uh, project. Now this is what's called a 9 inch series wound DC motor. So it's 9, in nine inches uh, diameter. It is a, a 8 brush motor. So inside here in the commutator end there are two brushes per uh, phase ba uh, basically. So other things that I've done in here has been completely clean it, replace the bearings, uh, beef up the, the insulation on the interconnects with PTFE tape and transformer varnish and various other modifications like that. Um, if you want more details on that, I can do a, vi a video. I think I have one mo motor here that I've yet to do those particular modifications on. So if it's a thing that you guys want to know about, um, I'm perfectly happy to you know, do one of these on camera for you. So this is the motor that we're going to use. And to be quite generous and to allow for you know, people having to travel to get you know, to find uh, a motor, I'm going to allow 100 euros of our budget uh, towards uh, the motor and getting it, you know, putting bearings in it, getting some paint, um, various other bits and pieces. So now I know that some of you are going to be screaming at the comment section now telling me that I'm full of more BS and I can't possibly get a forklift motor for a hundred euros and blah 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 play the violins and it's all BS and I'll just go on dri driving petrol cars. Well guys I'm going to show you how I have uh, came to having this stuff I'm going to make it as accessible as I can for you but I'm not going to do the legwork for you you've got to do that yourselves if you're doing an engine swap project if you're doing a major project on your car you've got to go out and find those components yourself and um, you know do some legwork right this is our motor and I can be more than confident in saying that this is going to easily um, not only match but outperform the 1.7 litre diesel, diesel engine currently in the E36. Um, so right, that is the motor. Uh, let's move on to how we're going to control it. All right, so now that we have a motor, in our car, bolted up to our gearbox and ready to provide motion. The next big ticket item that you would encounter on an electric vehicle build is a motor controller. Uh, motor controllers for DC on-road uh, electric vehicles. Um, they're probably not as expensive as they were. Uh, certainly have a look around second hand and so on but again one-offs are something I'm trying to avoid here I'm trying to demonstrate ways that are reasonably repeatable to you the viewer so we're going to need a means of taking a electronic signal from a throttle pedal that we're going to press 
and convert that into power to send to the mo motor so that the motor can produce torque and move our car down the ro road in a controllable manner. Now, in order to come in on budget uh, with this, we are going to uh, be using a piece of open source um, electro electro electronics uh, that was indeed another gateway for me into electric vehicle conversions because once I had my 500 euro motor uh, then I needed a way to control it and at the time there was a Curtis controller I forget the number of it but it was a 144 volt 500 amp uh, controller that made a horrible squealing sound and was several thousand euros um, you know by the time that you would actually get one at the time around 2009 2010 uh, a gentleman in America by the name of Paul Holmes uh, set about designing a low-cost DIY open source uh, 144 volt 500 amp motor controller and I became involved with that and uh, built quite a few of them over those early years um, but I used IGBT bricks um, rather than the MOSFETs that were in the original design. Now I've had to uh, revisit several contacts re recently and you know dig through various archives um, but I've gotten all the design files again I've gotten myself a bare PCB and uh, in our forthcoming episode we're going to do a complete episode on how we build for low cost a uh, DIY motor controller for our low cost motor now again, this is exactly what I have in my E39, E39. so it's been on the road four years and I've never had to take the cover off the controller once. Now, those of you a little bit more familiar with power electronics and so forth are going to be thinking right now that, uh, wait a sec, now, you, you, you know, this isn't going to work because we've got 600 euro battery. I've allowed you 100 euros to find a motor and to do it up and get, you know, get it into that condition. So that leaves me with 300 euros. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how we build a equivalent of a 500 amp, uh, 144 volt motor controller for 100 euros or less. Now, those of you that know a bit about things like power electronics, IGBT bricks, capacitors, IGBT drivers, all that, will be thinking that that's not really uh, practical. It's not actually possible without some very fortuitous circumstances uh, to build a IGBT based, um, fairly powerful DC motor controller for 100 euros or less. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be, basically I'm going to help you guys out. Now, the first design decision that I have taken for the entire vehicle build is that we are eliminating liquid cooling uh, totally. There will be no um, coolants in the vehicle at all. Uh, there will be just oil in the gearbox and the differential. Uh, we, we will be moving away from liquid cooling for the, obviously the motor will be air-cooled. We will be building an air-cooled uh, motor controller. And the other thing that we typically use, a coolant, or in this case a heatant, would be cabin heat. But I'll get to the cabin heat and how we're going to solve that in a later episode. But for now, we are going to be uh, building a air-cooled DC motor controller based on two uh, 600 volt, 600 amp um, Hitachi IGBT modules. Uh, we'll have capacitors, bus bars, gate drivers, logic board, uh, big fan to keep us all 
cool. And uh, we're going to be building it on this heatsink, um, and everything's going to get made up, uh, hopefully reasonably nice and safe on here. Now, get back to my point about the repeatability. So these IGBT brakes, if you look around around eBay, these are a half bridge module. So there's three power terminals on there, and there's two IGBTs in each one. Um, you can sometimes get lucky with some second-hand stuff, but you'd still be for two of these modules. Uh, you'd be paying, paying up, you know, maybe over two hundred euros for just the two modules them, 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 themselves. So let's go have a look, and I will explain to you how we're going to circumvent that. Now, you would be forgiven for thinking. Okay, just what is this particular pile of junk that I'm looking at here? And uh, you wouldn't be too far away from the truth. What I've got here are four uh, ANOVA uh, inverters for driving a three-phase AC motor. Uh, these were sent to me by a friend of a friend um, and initially we were looking at doing a project uh, based upon these inverters um, but we've since moved away from using these and um, I was going to pretty much just throw them away uh, because they're dreadful I don't you know I wouldn't intend to use these for a future project so I was going to maybe strip some of the parts out and get rid of them now it so happens that each of these has three 600 amp, 600 volt IGBT modules. And so one of the things I'm gonna do on a day that I'm not feeling too particularly brainy, which is most days, I'm gonna strip them apart, uh, take out the capacitor banks and you know the pre-charge resistors and the current sensors, IGBTs, fuses, all that good stuff uh, that we can use. I'm going to put that you know, in one of these boxes somewhere here just so it, it takes up a lot less space. So we have a source here of 12 um, 600 amp, 600 volt IGBT modules. The source of DC bus capacitors and various other bits that will be very useful for us in our uh, DC controller build. Aha! I've got you, Damien. Finally, I hear some of the detractors cry. You're going to use components that you have on hand, aren't you? That's cheating. You can't use those parts because I don't have them. How am I supposed to get those parts? Cheat, cheat, lie, lie, unsubscribe, hate, hate, hate. All right. Well, it ain't so because this is what we're going to do. I'll show you guys how to build that controller based upon the, some of the scrap parts that we're gonna strip from those ANOVA inverters. And here's a deal that I'm gonna make with you, the viewer. If you're following along, as crazy as that would be, in this build process, and you're trying to build yourself a low budget DC car, and you're really struggling to keep it on that budget. It doesn't have to be a 1,000 euro budget. It can be a 1,500 euro or two grand, but it's, you know, it's gotta be a low budget build that you're looking to get on the road and you cannot find the power electronics parts and so forth. I will give them to you for free, absolutely free. If you demonstrate to me be it in a video, a blog, or just send me some photographs and a few lines of what it is that you're trying to do, I will box up the parts and I will ship them to you anywhere in the world for free. I won't even charge shipping. They will be sent to you by track mail and you will get those parts from me for free. Now, that's how we're going to circumvent uh, some of the high costs of building a high power DC motor controller. Now, 
Some of you might be thinking, oh wait, you know, that's a 48 volt motor. I can get a 48 volt Curtis controller or some other brand controller very, very cheaply. Yes, and then your car will behave like a forklift. You will go at forklift speeds, even with a gearbox. So we need more volts and we need more amps to get us down the road and to reach our, our goals of minimum 70 miles per hour top speed and minimum 40 miles of mixed driving range. So this is how we're going to look at the drivetrain stuff guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this particularly boring episode and uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. We will see you in the next episode. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, but there's a lot of uh, you know, there's a lot of parts to this particular build that I'm finding interesting because I've got to stay within a particular budget and I'm now down to 200 euros. Spent 600 on a battery, spent 100 on a mo uh, motor, and I'm spending 100 on a motor controller. So I'm now down to 200 bucks uh, to finish the build and that's got to include things like accessories, power steering, power brakes, cabin heat, charging, all that stuff. So there are plenty more challenges to come. Don't think, think that I'm weaseling out of it too easily. So anyway, I've bored you to death enough already. So we will see you in the next video. Um, and until then, happy nostalgia DC motor controller building.